Natalia on Luxury with Natalia. I'm joined today by Henry Cookson, all the way in England. How are you, Henry? Um, given uh, current circumstances, fine, actually. Yeah, all, all in good spirits and, uh, yeah, no, everything's all right, thank you. Everything's good. Well, you're the kind of guy who gets people excited about going away and adventures. Of course, Cooks and Adventures is a wonderful um, company that's been around since 2009, offering these never unforgettable experiences. And uh, that's something you specialize in and your team. But what's happening now with everything? We're all stuck at home. And is your business still going? What's going on? So now we shut up shop and we've all we've given up. Corona's defeated us. Um, <laughs> no, it's it's you know the, the whole world is in the same boat. It's it's you know it, it's unprecedented. Um, but at some point life will carry on and life has to carry on. So, you know we've taken um, the necessary steps to ensure that the company is shored up and and secure for if and when this. Well, there is a when. We just don't know when that if is. Um, things start to get better. Um, you know there's there's two big problems here. We obviously have the virus itself and then we have the economy, and and then getting back to whatever sense of normality that that can be, um, and everyone gives up the ghost. Then that that um, impact to the financial side of it, the economic side of it, which will, will affect people, food on the table, shelters over their head, um, will be you know increased to a huge magnitude. So, I think it's very important that we keep positive. I think it's really important that we we prepare you know for the potential long term effects of this, but also prepare for what's happening on the other side of it. And so. With the, the team that we have, we, we're looking to the future. We're going back. We're looking at old projects. We're looking at ideas of traveling, things that were sort of those little conversations that scribble on a post-it note that never actually came into fruition. So I suppose we're going back. And I suppose we give a, a gardening terminology analogy. We're picking up those seeds again. We're putting them in some really fertile soil and letting them sprout. And then hopefully in time, they'll bear some delicious fruit. <laughs> I love it. And I'm very much impressed by what you're doing on your social media as well. Keeping those dreams alive and absolutely all these little seedlings that were sprouting and sort of forgotten are now coming back. And especially remoteness and solitude, these places that have perhaps more um, something to offer than more places that we've been familiar with and where lots of people are always in the same spot. So tell us a bit more about what those places might be. So I, I suppose I've always swum against the current. And for me, the ideal thing about going away is, is having a sense of originality, a sense of uniqueness and doing something a bit away from other people. Um, you know, There are those staples that, that everyone will do and continue to do, whether it's a party islands in the Mediterranean, or if it's uh, going up a mountain during the, the ski season. And that's something that people will continue to do. But also, I think, you know, what's going through now, people are going to reflect a little bit more. And yep, you've got the Mediterranean, if you're European based on your doorstep, you've got the Alps, if you're um, from the US, you've got other places that you can go to every summer, Easter, Christmas of your life. But it's a huge, great world there. And and, you know, the frustration that I've always had, you know, we think our, our own mindset. And I think it's insanity for people to do the same routine thing over and over again. Yeah, it's fun. It's great. But every so often, I think you should get out of your comfort zone a bit and go and look at something else. And, you know, over time, I've realized, OK, we're all made differently. We all have a different priority and, and what we like. But I think this, the enormity of the situation we've just had is, is I think, giving people a pause for thought. and say, like, OK, well, what am I going to do next time I go away? Yeah, I can go and hang out in some shishi bar or some shishi club, you know. How much meaning does that really have? Um, you know, it serves a purpose. It, it does something. But, you know, the time that we have away, we all work very hard. Um, you know, that's, I think, some of the most important time that we'll ever have. And to share precious moments and really extraordinary, exquisite places with friends and family, or even on your own. You know, we have people who travel on their own with us. That's something that you can never take away. You know, even with all that hard work and you you obtain huge, you know, beyond imagination riches. You know, there's only so much assets that you can actually accumulate you know another car another house you know another another boat you know another jet another jewelry collection another piece of art eventually that stuff it doesn't you know the meaning becomes less and less the return on that emotional investment whatever the serotonin hit you get becomes less so the world is infinite traveling is infinite the experiences the cultures the, the different wildlife is is just it's 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 unending and to be able to see those and appreciate the world around us, you know, our home, our home that we are tragically destroying at a very rapid pace. Well, maybe now people will pause 
they'll reconnect and they'll want to go and see these things. And then maybe they'll help contribute in a positive way. Um, you know, it's at the moment, it's just it's, it's a totally non-balanced relationship. We go and take from the earth. We see the earth. We see its wildlife. We, we, we get pleasure and memories from it, but we don't really give back. So I think it's a moment now that people should like go, go, OK, let's see these places. Let's have an emotional connection and, and maybe give something back as well. And that's something you just nailed it on the head there. Um, when you mentioned that all these things, the materialistic things that we own, they mean nothing even in confinement now. I mean, what is it that we as people, as humanity can do once we come out of this um, situation and, and learn from it and also appreciate a different way of travel? Perhaps air travel will not be the same as it was before and there'll be new novel ways of going around and uh, I just read an article by UBS they're saying that trains will be uh, back into popularity so you know and also chartering yachts um, what kind of yachts will we have will they now be driven by renewable energy or you know all these things that are in the pipeline now that people have time to think about and especially you as travel experts i'm sure very excited about what you can come up with together with the various industries that support the travel oh, we, we have a, you know all sorts of incredible initiatives for example there's a uh, a company who who has um uh, reinvented the the blimp the, the the zeppelin you know which was oh, obviously yeah. made infamous by um you know the hindenburg disaster um and this is an incredibly environmentally clean way of traveling and you can travel you know vast distances you know, about 70 knots, but as a straight line, you can get from Northern Europe and Norway to the North Pole in about a day and a half. And you do it in total silence. You're looking down at the ground below. There's a buildup. There's this, you know, our world has become in this age of consumerism. It's it's all about as many experiences you can have as quickly as possible. It's tick, 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 tick. And I think, you know, something that we've always done, we've always been quality over quantity. You know, we, we have a big team. We have 20, 20 plus people. We may even do, you know, we might only do 15 to 30 trips a year. All those people, you know, based in an office in central London, dedicated to creating some of the best programs, experiences on the planet. You know, you don't need to go away every weekend. You don't need to, you know, use that carbon footprint wisely and go and do something big and meaningful, really engage in a place. You know, the one argument, could I say, maybe disagreement I have with my clients is the amount of time that they allocate to their trips. If you're going to spend the time, the money, the resources, you know, sometimes there's hundreds of people involved with the project. It could take over a year to plan it. And you only go into that location, having flown halfway around the world to meet your friends and your family for five or six days. You know, you barely settled in. You know, you have to you have to remove yourself from the digital side of things. You know, that umbilical cord of data, of Wi-Fi on your phone. And that will take three, four days. And then you've got to start getting the mindset, oh, my God, I'm going to return back to this, this rat race. So you need that time in the middle to actually get a sense of what's happening. Um, I mean, to give an example, we have this, this charming uh, client who's a young lad, he's in his early 20s, he's just finished his MBA, and you know, he has a very um, long-standing family business, which he will go into, but, but he wants to take some time off when he finishes you know, his, his MBA, which is, um, and he wants to go and see the world and look at conservation projects. And then whichever conservation projects he, he likes, um, we've helped him select them out of a short list of 100 down to 30. Um, his family's philanthropic trust is going to support. And to start off with, he has five months. He wanted to go everywhere. And I said, look, just hold on. You know, the world's a big place. Let's let's put it to two regions, yeah? Because you need to immerse yourself. You need to fully understand. And I think that's the sort of mentality you should do. You know, whether it's conservation or just a family holiday, not, not so deep and meaningful, you know, it, it's time. It's quality over quantity, I think, is the way that things, you know. And, and we look at the, the mass production of everything. You can click on a button on Instagram and you can have a thousand different choices of scented candle or light shade or whatever it is. You know, and the throwaway mentality, you know, we should think about building things and making things that last. So it should be the memories. And, and if you underpin those memories with long, meaningful experiences, you really get to know the local cultures. You really get to connect with the experts, the conservationists that we bring in. Um, you really get to connect with the people you're with. You know, then, then that will never that'll never end. That memory is locked away up there forever. Sounds like we're um, booking ourselves into a trip with you there, Henry. Amazing <laughs> energy and really inspiring. So what makes um, the DNA of a modern adventurer like yourself? 
Oh God! Um, I think I think if you looked at some of the ingredients, I don't know. They probably come from out of space. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. It's 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 a, it's a variety of experiences of life, of life. You know, life has ups, it has downs, and and they all push you in a certain direction. I mean, I never intended to get into this world. It all slightly happened by an accident. I mean, I I certainly used to read and watch the um, you know I remember I had a book called Life on Earth by David Attenborough when I was a young child, and I, I always always fantastic fascinated by animals. Um, but you're brought you're brought up in an area you know I was brought up with a in a, within a family you know that there was a sort of an expectation you should go into the city you'll be a lawyer and so you sort of follow that track. But I spent a lot of time in in East Africa in Kenya when I was in my teens and, and actually ended up working out there on a horse riding safari. And that that sort of set off an itch that I didn't quite realise at the time, but but it was there and I couldn't get rid of it. And I was working um, as a, as a banker at Goldman Sachs and and then one day I just had this epiphany. I said this is this is what I need to do. Um, and I had a plan to go to Africa. That that never happened for various reasons. But you know, another sort of chance conversation. I ended up doing these ex incredible experiences. I, I did two expeditions: one to the magnetic North Pole in the Canadian Arctic, and then I crossed the Antarctic using a kite ski to a place called the Pole of Inaccessibility. And that was a what 53-day expedition, just four of us. So total isolation. So it's sort of preparation for this. Um, and, 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 you know, I've been very social. I've met a huge variety of people in my life from all walks of life, very sort of quirky and different. And all those little data points just feed in and, and, and then just give you ideas. And I, I have I have four little brothers um, and, you know, all of them are creative in, in some way or other. They could all be artists. I, I couldn't even draw a stick man. So I never saw myself as being creative, but it's only... Now, in hindsight, I've been told by enough people, actually, well, your creation is, or creativity is not being able to transpose something from your hand onto a piece of paper. It's, it's what you have up here and being able to see a, a landscape, to see an area, to look at a map, to speak to a few people and then create a, an experience about it. Um, and it took me quite a while as, as the company grew and it started off just from me and then more people came on board. I used to get frustrated because people wouldn't be able to replicate what I was doing. But what I saw or found out that I could see this stuff so easily when I'd explain it to someone, for me, it was what just was so blindingly obvious for them. It wasn't so so apparent. Um, so in time, I've, I've learned to identify people who are more attuned to, to what I'm about. And also, I'm more patient. I've spent more time actually, you know, getting that that, that image and that and that, um, that vision across. Yeah, well, that's the sign of a true entrepreneur and creative soul, because uh, it's all within and then trying to translate it sometimes is quite a challenge. So you've got a good team that's managed to do something. Well they're, done. they're a great team. They're fantastic. <laughs> they really are. Oh, fantastic. And tell me, um, so you've met, how many travel experiences have you personally been engaged with? Oh, I can't. I don't actually know. I, 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 someone, I, I met someone the other day who'd been to 130 countries. And I never counted. Um, and I know I'm, I'm relatively little traveled. I'm, I have traveled a lot, but I've only I've gone back to a lot of locations, um, you know, repeatedly. And I tend to go to the more remote locations, which are harder to get to. Um, and also, I've been very lucky. My, my parents used to be in travel as well. They had a, a villa rental company. So we had a, a, a house in Greece, which we still have. And so I was out there every summer. So because of that, I didn't travel widely in Europe. Um, you know, I think I've been to 83 countries. Um, okay. But then quite a few of them are ones that people have barely heard of. And, you know, Antarctica is, you know, obviously people have heard of it, but it's one that, you know, I've been there five or six times now. So um, there's still a huge amount I want to see. And, um, you know, I, because of this coronavirus, I was meant to be in Socotra, which is a, a small island off the Yemen, um, which for a long time has been been unsafe. The security has, has now improved drastically. And I was due to go there um, in mid, mid March, um, but literally the day that we're due to fly, a very complicated logistic to get there. Corona really came in and, and that sort of put that on 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 pause. You know, everything's on pause. Nothing's been cancelled. That's, um, that's the, the way thing. that we're looking yeah. at things. Yeah. I think it's important to also say, and I'm very much involved in the wedding business as well as a wedding planner, a second hat. And um, what we're telling our clients are is very much postpone. Don't cancel. Just postpone. This is a little leap and a chapter that's going to have to be overcome. But the dream will still go on and. You know that's important that people still maintain that and it's also good for their mind and <laughs> to keep positive and keep inspired and, and have those dreams come true with the help of others to make them happen of course uh, absolutely i mean yeah and use to use a well-coined term uh, the herd <laughs> herd of unity but herd mentality you know if, if, if we all think negatively and things aren't going to carry on then you know it will fuel it'll be a catalyst for 
the next step, you know, the, re the recovery. And the way that recovery goes is how people deal with it. And, you know, people might think that, that travel is frivolous and it's not the top priority. Well, there's not a person I've spoken to, and this is not just clients, this is peers, family, peer groups and family who said, I can't wait to get away. Um, yeah, maybe that might seem an indulgence, but you know, there, there is actually a very you know, um, stark reality as well. Um, tourism is worth 10% of, of GDP, um, a huge proportion of our industry, of our world turnover. And you know, for the likes of us you know, sitting in London, you know, we, we're okay. You know, it's, it's tough times, but we have a roof over our head, we have food, we've got Amazon delivery, all these amazing things, you know, online therapists and, and trainers and, and you name it. But you know the, the people who are actually servicing on the ground, there are communities everywhere. There are wildlife conservation projects, which a sole sense of, in a sole sense of income is through tourism. Yeah. So if we don't start traveling quite soon, those people are not gonna be putting food on the table. You know, the environment, the conservation side of things is gonna really collapse. So we're gonna leave the world in an even worse place unless we, you know, there is a sort of responsibility to travel to ourselves, to, to have that breakthrough, to, to sort of clear the, you know, the air after you know, the confinement we had, but also to support these people around the world. Um, and I think that's really, really important. So you know, those, those clients who are due to travel you know, currently, um, you know, almost to a one, they've all postponed. And you know, we're, we're slowly talking to clients about potentials going on. You know, it's still at the moment a little bit wait and see. Um, you know, that our governments, our authorities are still working out exactly how to deal with the next steps and, and, and counter the current threat. But, you know, once once you know, things start normalizing a bit, you know, I don't think there's anything um, immoral about about at least thinking about what next for traveling. Good, well said. And um, so what's the next place you're uh, going to be uh, going to then? I mean, is it picking up from where you left off or is it completely taking it back to the drawing board and going somewhere? Uh, we've got we've got projects um, in the Pacific. Um, we've got submersible diving projects with linked into conservation in the Pacific. And, and again, that's was due to go off in June. Um, we're just sort of waiting and we're going to postpone it until it's, it's safe to travel. You know, the last thing we want to do is people flying in and then um, contaminating local people. So, you know, we're just, you know, like everything we do, we do risk assessments, you know, risk management is, is the absolute top thing. So, you know, it has to be done responsibly. Um, you know, we're talking to families who are looking to go and take take a private island, other people who want to go and do a diving trip, um, you know, all, all sorts. Um, you know, th th that's the beauty of what we do. We don't we don't pigeonhole into any particular trip that the range of things we do is just insane. I mean, we've had in the last 12 months, a, a lady who wanted to, to ride around the world on a horse. Um, this young, young lad who wanted to do his conservation project, uh, I said submersible expeditions, we have uh, rally trips, um, we've done big, big birthday celebrations in Africa for sort of 30 people, you know, eight helicopters flying them out to little secret locations for parties and things, um, to a family doing a, a four month sabbatical with tutors and conservation projects and, and social welfare projects, even having their board meeting, um, you know, on, on a riverboat in, in Myanmar. Um, so, you know, there's all these incredible things. And, and then there could be the more normal, you know, five day adrenaline hit um, up in Norway for, for a group of guys. Um, you know, uh, we've done, you know, we've got a guy who wants to go and look at the, the, the origins of Islam by Dao. Um, so it, it's, you know, there's, there's nothing that we don't look at. Um, really? you know, there's lots of normal stuff, you know, boat trips and, and, and you know, private islands and things. But, but we pride ourselves with doing the more unique you know, out of the ordinary, com complex, um, you know, give us that challenge. Absolutely. Wow. And I like that. That's what your USP really is. It's sort of out of the ordinary, out of the box and really going for the adventure side. And that's amazing. So hopefully we'll be able to experience some of your cool adventures in the future. And um, one last thing I wanted to ask you is what would be your top three tips for somebody who's planning their next adventure? What do they have to think about? What do they have to think about? Okay, so think about what, what, is, what has been, held, what's held you back in the past? You know, what we all have boundaries, we all have um, fears. And, and, you know, perception is everything. You know, for us who are well-traveled, you know, just to pop over to Africa for a long weekend is fine. For other people, they may have never left Europe. Um, so, so just think about what, what has held you back. Think about what you've really, what's grabbed and resonated with you while you've been watching the television, while you've been flicking through a, a magazine, looking at Instagram. And, and, and then, you know, speak to your friends, speak to your family. Who do you want to join with these things? You know, I've done a, a lot of trips on my own doing research for clients and, and for my own travels, but there's nothing better than sharing it with someone. Um, so think about, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, you have a very tight knit group of friends, but maybe they're very much sort of 
in that mind zone right now, I'm going to take a villa in the Balearic Islands, or I'm only going to go to Florida. Um, you know, well, maybe spread your wings a little bit and, and speak to friends who are a bit more eclectic, a little bit more risk taking. And by risk, I'm not saying doing anything dangerous, but going something a little bit further than what you're used, you're used to, you know, and get that conversation going. You know, we all know how we have found ourselves in new careers, new relationships, new experiences, just from that offhand conversation that you might have had at a dinner table or even on a train or you know, on a plane or whatever it might be. So, so start these conversations and go, well, what if, you know, if we had all the time, if we had all the money, well, where would we go? And then work back. Start with your dreams nice and high. And then you can just scale back to something which is, you know, in between what your previous comfort zone and, and what that dream is. Fantastic. You should be a motivational speaker, by the way. I'm really ready to go. <laughs> well, well I'll, I'll play this back because I need some motivation to keep my, my discipline going <laughs> during this uh, this uh, this lockdown. I, I just, uh, yeah, it's, I've got my rowing machine here and I have a paddleboard that I go and take onto the canal in, in, in London. Um, it's the perfect form of isolation, um, exercise, stroke, meditation. So. <laughs> That's wonderful, Henry. Thank you so much for coming on and all your insights. And if anyone wants to connect with you or the company, where do they go? Um, so we have all the use of, we have Cooks and Adventures um, on Instagram or Cooks and Adventures uh, website. Um, or we have an email info at cooksandadventures.com. All the contact info is there. There's a booking, you know, there's a, there's a contact form and the team are there and, you know, they, they've got all these wonderful ideas. And, you know, the best thing is a, con a conversation. You know, our, we don't have anything off the shelf, nothing planned, nothing packaged. We have examples of old trips, um, but every trip that we do starts from a, con uh, a conversation. Normally it's face to face. Right now it has to be done through you know, <laughs> digital. Um, but, but, you know, it's, it's helping eke out those ideas that maybe you didn't know you want to do. You know, we have the range and the experience. So let us draw those out. You give us the seed and we'll help you grow it. Um, so, yeah. Amazing. Thank you, Henry. And I Thank wish you. the best for you and the team in the next few weeks that are lined up. But it's great. We get to brainstorm and really get at it <laughs> to come out better and stronger at the end of it. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. And um, our next broadcast, I think we should do live from some remote exotic place, yeah. which will inspire lots of people. Absolutely. Yeah. I especially love the submersible photo that yeah. I used and um, lots of content there. So sure. let's watch this space and yeah. come soon. <laughs> we'll, we'll do a combined wedding honeymoon somewhere. <laughs> I'm getting to that. Okay, you take care. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. Right. This was another episode with Luxury with Natalia. More episodes coming soon. Take care, everyone. Bye. <laughs>